Hi, so welcome back and we're back in the chicken pen as you can see today. Morning. Now we've been dealing with the breeding of Buff Orpington chickens and we've now tested Rooster Colburn um, and his eggs are fertile. Cinnamon is sat on eggs, now we have Nutmeg who has decided to sit. Now at the moment we've given her Plaster Paris eggs and she's got five of them. The only problem that we've got is that she's not actually covering them particularly well. So before we give her fertile eggs we really need to have a think about how this is going to work because if she can't cover false eggs um, we may have problems with fertile eggs um, and we don't want them to die clearly. So, what are we going to do? Well, we had an issue last year, didn't we, with some of the broody pullets where they would go broody, but they struggled to stay on the egg for at least the first seven days. Yeah. Uh, Clementine particularly was bad, but one or two of the others as well. And brain. Yeah, yep. brain was quite bad too. So my view says, give her a few eggs to sit on, but deem that they will die. Deem them as sacrificial, just replacements for the plaster of Paris eggs. But give the bulk of what she's going to sit on, we'll put it into the incubator. And what we can do then, if we keep them in the incubator for a bit, as she settles after the first week, when we've candled them, we can start working a number of them under her. Okay, but if we only give her a few to sit on, it, she may well actually cover those. So I, I'm. You know, I understand the, the need to think of them as sacrificial, but mm -hmm. I, she may, if we only give her, a, say, three or four, mm -hmm. she might actually cope with them. She might, but let's, like you say, I mean, we tested, the test batch was 85% fertile. Yes. We also know that cinnamon's already broken one getting on and off the nest. True. We also know that of fertile eggs, not all will emerge from the shell. True. So we've got to find a number that says, well, I mean, how many, you know, Clementine at one point, because of issues, adopted someone else's clutch last year. So she had about 16, 17 chicks and she managed them. Yeah, but I think the number of chicks is probably not the, the concern. It's the number of eggs. And if we're hoping to return all of the eggs to her before yep. the 21 days are up, mm -hmm. we need to find a number which means that she's going to end up with... 12 or 13 at the most. Yep. Well, with um, 85%, if you assume no damage, that would say 15 eggs. But there's going to be some failures. So I would say okay. 18. Mm, I, I think that's slightly too many. Um, I think we could end up having to take some through to the end of the incubator, which I prefer not to do. Okay. Um, now, my concern with the incubator, just to explain, is incubators have a lower success rate of hatching than broody hens do. Um, because with incubators, you've got to control the humidity, the temperature, um, and just make sure those eggs are turned properly. Um, now, we have a very good incubator that does, does a lot of that for us, but Broody hens have a much higher success rate for hatching. Um, they have this instinct for turning the eggs and keeping the temperature right and uh, sorting the humidity out as well. So um, I prefer to try and get all of the eggs under her before they start to pip. No, I, I tend to agree with that. It's just what, what is the right number. Now, I, I reckon with 18 you'll get 12 to hatch. Um, you think less. Well, if we want to get... If we want to get 12 eggs under her by the end of the 21 days, mm -hmm. I mean, if we go back to the numbers, so if if we said 16, mm -hmm. because I'm um, so allowing for one breakage, because you, you did mention um, 15, didn't you? Well, 15 would say, assuming 15 is on the fertility. So yeah. 15 says... Nothing gets broken, everything emerges from the shell, you'd get 12 to actually come out because three would be infertile. Okay, and if we add, uh, odd numbers just seem strange, I, you know, it's just one of those things for me. Um, if you add one more, that allows for one breakage. Yep. So I'm more comfortable with 16 than 18. 18 just feels like we're running the risk of not being able to cover a full batch. Okay, well we can go with 16, but my bet is we'll only get to 10 that actually emerge. Possibly, but we'll at least have her on a full batch of eggs and none in the incubator by the end of the 20 Yeah, I agree days. we don't want any in the incubator. I'm happy to go with 16. Okay. But I would go with a couple more. But we'll compromise. 
<laughs> I, what, I'll give in. <laughs> no, that's what marriage is all about, love. It's compromise. That's silly. <laughs> So once a day, broody hens will actually leave the coop and they'll go out and forage for as much food as they can possibly find and look for as much drinking water as they can possibly take in. The other thing that they'll try and fit into that time is to evacuate their bowels. Now, that's great news for us because it meant it gave us the opportunity to remove the false plaster Paris eggs that we had in the coop and pop in four real eggs eggs while at the same time putting 12 eggs in the incubator. Now we took the opportunity to pop a camera in as well so we could just check what she was going to do. And when we first saw the footage we were a little bit disappointed because as you can see when she first sits down there's actually two eggs just visible in a line of sight so they can they can be seen. But as we carried on watching, we realised actually that she was nesting. So she's moving the nesting material around. She's trying to make sure that the nest is arranged perfectly and beautifully so that the eggs are kept as warm as possible. And as time moves on, you'll actually see that she moves around a little bit more. So now she's got the nesting material right on one side, she'll actually pick herself up very slightly, she'll move that egg under her, pick herself up, move around and then start on another little bit of the nest. Then she settles back down and she gradually works her body over those exposed eggs to keep them as warm as possible. Once she's done that and she's happy, she closes her eyes and actually starts to go into the broody hen trance. There she goes. Now Nutmeg's now sat on her eggs absolutely beautifully and what I want to do now is just have a quick check on cinnamon for the evening. So there we go. Now can you see she's fluffed all her feathers out, that's what I call the puffer lump look and that's her actually telling me to go away. She's trying to make herself as big as possible so that I leave her in peace. So I'm going to close the lid and just do that. Now at the end of last week's video you would have heard me talk about the fact that we put runs onto each of the broody hens coops and that's to keep other hens out not to keep the broody hens in. What I'm going to show you now is a piece of film which illustrates exactly why that's so important. Ginger, one of our other Buff Orpington hens, had decided to go broody in this coop. Now, we didn't know this at the time, so she wasn't actually sat on any active eggs. We heard all this commotion and then saw a chicken backing out of the coop door. Then we realised that she was actually physically dragging another hen out and realised it was Sage, one of the older hens, dragging Ginger off the nest box. Now this is why it's so important to have a run on any coop that you've got pretty hens in and you have other hens in the flock. If Ginger was not in such a trance and if a fight had ensued, eggs would be smashed chicks would not have the opportunity to develop to hatching state. So poor little Ginger is just sat in the doorway. She doesn't know what on earth has happened. Now I hope this has all been helpful to you and I hope to see you next week and you can follow the saga of nutmeg, cinnamon and any other of our hens that have decided to go broody. Don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you next week.